everyone, this is my first video on 4.2 for Math 082. This section teaches you how to perform factoring by grouping. So I want you to think about these um, terms right here. So let's look at, for example, 2x plus 2y. So most people, right, are pretty comfortable at this point with factoring at a 2. You could rewrite this as 2 times the quantity of x plus y. Let me rewrite that. 2 times the quantity x plus y. Okay. If I replace that 2 with, I don't know, some letter a, I could write a times the quantity x plus y. If I got really silly and I started using any kind of symbol instead of just a letter, I could use a smiley face times x plus y. And then if we get really complicated, you can see that both the x and the y have this 2x plus 1 next to them. So I can replace that smiley face with a 2x plus 1 times the quantity x plus y. So this final form here are the kinds of results that we're going to expect to get from this section. So let's go over the process that we should be using when we factor. So our general factoring strategy, as you remember from 4.1, is to find and factor out the GCF. Okay, so it's really important that you always remember to do this. As we learn subsequent factoring strategies, it's tempting to forget to do this. Okay, right, because as you learn new things, sometimes it like pushes out the old information. But every single time you do a problem with factoring, you always want to look for the GCF first. So once we're done that, then the next thing is if you have four terms, okay, then we are going to use what's called factoring by grouping. Okay, and that's what this section is on. So let's go ahead and do an example. So the first thing we want to do okay, before anything else, is to identify the GCF. And again, this is what we learned in 4.1. So this is stuff that we should already know how to do, okay? So the GCF means that it's contained in not one, not two, not three, but all four terms in this expression. So take a minute and look at this. Do you see any variable or number or combination that is contained in all four terms. Well, I do, I see an A. One, two, three, four, they all have A's. So my GCF is A. So before I start on the grouping part of my factorization, I'm going to rewrite this problem like this. I guess it's kind of weird that I write my Y's two different ways, I should probably stick to one font. Sorry about that. Okay, so my A is going to be there for the whole rest of the problem. He's just going to hang out out there. So I'm going to use brackets just to remind myself of that. Okay, so inside these brackets I have y cubed plus y squared plus 10y plus 10. Okay, so factoring by grouping is exactly what it sounds like. I'm literally going to group the first two terms together, sorry, yeah, that's right, and then group the second two terms together. And then I'm just going to look at these first two terms and find the GCF of just these two. So remember our rule with exponents, the GCF is the lowest exponent of the two. So the lowest exponent I see here is y squared, okay? Remember factoring that out uh, is the same as dividing both terms by y squared. And so then we can clearly see um, what is left over. y cubed divided by y squared is y, and y squared divided by y squared is 1. Okay, so then we're going to come over here to this second set of terms, um, making sure as we do so that we bring down that plus sign. It's very important, otherwise it feels like we're multiplying, which we are not trying to do right now, okay? And we're looking for, again, the GCF here between these two terms. 
So it looks to me like they both share a 10. So the GCF is 10, okay? So if I divide 10y by 10, that leaves me with y. And if I divide 10 by 10, that leaves me with one, okay? So this thing right here, okay, is one of those uh, situations where we were talking about like this, right? We have one term here, we have the same term here, so we can factor it out, and that's what we're gonna do, okay? So the whole point is that this y plus one is here, and it's also here, okay? So even though it's a sum of two terms, we can still factor it out, okay? And then the pink stuff is what's left over on the inside. So we have y squared plus 10 on the inside. And that is our final answer, except, what did I forget? See, I told you I was gonna forget. Okay, we forgot to bring down the A. So let's do that real quick before we box him in and circle him as the final answer. Okay, so A, okay, he's still there. He's still a part of the problem, right? So we have to include him in the final answer. So that is our final answer. Okay, let's do another problem. Okay, so again, the first thing we want to do is look for the GCF. Do you see anything that is contained in one, two, three, all four terms? So take a minute and think about it. Right now, I don't see anything. Okay, so the GCF then is one. The greatest common factor that they all share is one. So that's not really worth mentioning or bothering about. So now we're going to try to factor by grouping. So we have 10AB plus 2A plus 15B plus 3, okay? And then grouping literally means just throwing the first two together and then throwing the second two together, okay? So what is our GCF here? What's the biggest term that goes into both 10AB and 2A? If you said 2a, then you are correct. That is our GCF. Okay, to figure out what's left over on the inside, remember we can buy, divide both terms by 2a. So 10 over 2 is 5, and the a's cancel out, so we're left with 5b. Here, 2a divided by 2a is 1. Okay, we need to do the same thing over here with these other two terms, see what they have in common. Okay, it looks to me like the GCF is three. And remember, you can feel free to pause these videos if it's going too fast for you. Um, or you can speed them up if it's going too slow. So 15B divided by three is 5B, three divided by three is one. Okay, so once again, you can see that 5B plus one is the same as 5b plus 1. That's not terribly surprising, okay? So since those are the same, we can factor that out. So we pull out the 5b plus 1, and then, okay, what's left over? Well, we have a 2a here and a plus 3 here, so that's what's left over inside of our parentheses. And that is our final answer. Okay, so I'm going to release a second video, um, so stay tuned for more examples.